acknowledges the game that wears its influences on its sleeve. While perfectly possible to comprehend its story without knowing these influences, by understanding and analyzing them, we can often help deepen our understanding of the game as a whole. As of such, I think it is relevant that I should cover how Silent Hill 1 influenced Ignalis. Now, before the obvious is stated, the other games in the series, as well as Resident Evil, all also play major influences on the title. But for the premise of this video, we will primarily focus on just the first Silent Hill. Obviously, before we really get into this, spoiler warning for both Silent Hill 1 and Signalis, as we will be talking about both of these titles and how they are connected to one another. So, let's start with perhaps the most fundamental connection between these two titles, this being the blurry border between reality and dreams. In Silent Hill this is blatant, as the fog world we observe, as well as the deeper nightmare realm, both being reflections of a dream bleeding into reality. This ideal of a dream overtaking reality certainly sees its influence in Signalis as well. As there are many motifs throughout Signalis which question where the line between dreams and reality really lies. It is this very question which makes up a dominant part of Signalis theory writing, as theorists struggle to discern what is dream, what is influence of a dream, or what is reality. Regardless of what theory you follow, it is clear that the dreaming motif in Signalis is a very present one, one that likely took inspiration from Silent Hill. The presence of this connection is made even greater when one approaches Signalis from the dream angle. As in Silent Hill, the demons that we observe are distorted and corrupted representations of ideals and things that Alessa was afraid of, made manifest throughout the town. By this strain, in dream theories, the various corrupted replicas are also manifestations of the corruption that Arion saw the nation as, distorted into hellspawn by the nightmare which she cannot awake. There is another point to add to this direction, for much like Alessa, Arion cannot awake from her nightmare, and is kept alive despite wanting the contrary. In Alessa's case, she is burned to ash and kept alive due to the machinations of her mother and her goals, but in Arion's case, she is reduced to a horrid state by her ailments, and kept alive either by bioresonance or the cryopod despite sign signaling that she wants relief. Another overarching theme found throughout both games is the concept of the merging of two into one. In Silent Hill, this is demonstrated through the two halves of Alessa's soul being Alessa and Cheryl. These two halves ultimately recombine into a singular being over the events of the game. By the same line, we also see similar ideas throughout Signalis, be it our Elster slow becoming into Elster 512, or Alina Show and Falk becoming Arion. This idea of combining individuals into a common person is present in both games, suggesting a further undertone of inspiration from Silent Hill in Signalis. However, from vague story details that align, we can move to more direct inspiration. Nowhere is a level in both games with the very similar characteristics. Nowhere is a brutal and hostile location marked by decay and corruption of what is familiar. Nowhere in both games stands as an odd collection of locations and doors that seem to defy common logic and yield in space, signifying the extent that the corruption has reached by this point. It takes not much more than simply looking at both angles from a similar camera angle to see the extent of the inspiration Signalis took from Silent Hill regarding this level, demonstrating the influence Siggy took from its predecessor. Finally, we bring up what could possibly be a stretch, but I see similarities, so I figured I'd bring it up. Issa in Signalis is a character who is friendly to the player, was once friends with Arion, and is shrewded in mystery. Lisa Garland in Silent Hill is friendly to the player, was once the nurse for Alessa, and is too shrewded in mystery. The similarity between these two could just be coincidental, however, I'll bring up the things that I find overlap between the two. Issa and Lisa both appear in areas heavily marked by the influences of the dream. Lisa in the nightmares and Issa in nowhere. Lisa and Issa both saw an incident of pain for the main focus of the game, with Lisa seeing pain of Alessa and being unable to stop it, and Issa seeing the pain of Arion and being unable to stop it. Both characters ultimately learn the truth of their adventure in the final part of their stories, and unable to handle the truth succumb to the corruption with Issa melting away and Lisa bleeding from her head. While these connections could just be circumstance, 
I think Lisa Garland did play a slight inspirational role into the creation of Issa, showcasing more how the devs were inspired by the story of Silent Hill. Overall, Silent Hill 1 seems to have played a pretty large role in influencing Signalis, but it certainly wasn't the only influence with Resident Evil, Silent Hill 2 and The King in Yellow all also playing their own part. I will certainly cover these, inf these influences in a future video. So that's it for today. If I missed anything, be sure to comment in the comments below. I adore both games, so I did my best to try and remember every detail I could. If you like either Signalis or Silent Hill content, feel free to subscribe. But with that, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.